So that was the first thing. The second thing was to define what quality is. Now, you might think that's a relatively um, kind of straightforward, straightforward thing. Everybody in the NHS is in favour of quality. Very few people, I think, at, uh, uh, would say that, you know, in 100% of cases, quality really is the organising principle of the NHS. But as a destination, it seemed really important. But you had to define what quality was. Because whilst everyone was in favour of it, everybody had a different view about what it was. So defining quality was really critical. And defining quality as clinical outcome, safety and patient experience was a really powerful thing to say. What it said to people is, it's no good just getting the kind of clinical outcome right. You need to make sure the services are safe and that the patient experience is good. It's no good getting a fantastic patient experience if the clinical services were poor and all the rest of it. So all of those three things together are what make quality. That's what we're trying to build in to all of the definitions, whether it be through accreditation of practices, whether it be through uh, the work we're doing with uh, the GMC and other organisations. Quality in those three dimensions is absolutely critical as we, take, as we take the service forward. And when we do that, we can understand. So it's not a trade-off, one against the other. You have to do all three to get a real quality service. Now, you know as well as I do that um, we're, going, we're going to go through some very, very difficult financial circumstances for the NHS and for the public service generally. The challenges that we face are very similar to the challenges in healthcare systems across the, across the world. They are, that we're all faced with the same kinds of uh, issues and that's why we've got uh, the reform uh, uh, program which is a kind of stuttering to some kind of uh, result in America, that's why in France and Germany and all and the Scandinavian countries, everyone's looking at this whole issue about how we're going to do in healthcare what most of the rest of the economy have already learned some years ago, which it is perfectly possible to improve quality and improve productivity simultaneously. And a lot of the examples we see around really do really do, do show, show us that. And we are absolutely committed to taking this forward, but in an engaged way with people as we, as we go forward. The, the mountain we've got to climb is enormous. The financial um, uh, position that the NHS will find itself in over the next five years or so is very difficult indeed. If I just to, to, just to give you an idea, you know, four or five years ago, we can all remember when the NHS got itself into financial difficulties, we were aiming, we were kind of moving towards an underlying uh, deficit of something in the region of nearly a billion pounds. We can all remember, you know, on one particular day, I think 250,000 people were marching in various towns and villages, mainly in Kent, as I remember, it, um, <laughs> about uh, shortcomings in the NHS service reconfiguration, all of those sorts of things. We had big battles between managers and uh, 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 clinicians. There wasn't a day when there wasn't a big thing on the... Uh, on the newspapers about, and that was just trying to get a billion pound. We're talking about between 15 and 20 over three years. So just the scale of the change is absolutely enormous. And it is, it is possible for us in the NHS in those circumstances not is to fail. We, we, we could fail. We could not. Do, it is possible that we won't, we won't do that. But it's not inevitable. There are things that we know, we've known for years, that we can do. And my contention in all of this is that focusing on patient experience and empowerment and involvement is much more likely to drive you to the right answers than it is to the wrong. The danger for the NHS as we sit here today is that we retreat into some kind of, I don't know, slash and burn centralised uh, uh, organisation which simply won't deliver the changes for our patients, it won't improve quality and it won't, in, in, uh, quality and it won't improve productivity. And if you look at where the potential productivity gains are, they're all around the interface between secondary and primary care, between um, uh, self-care and primary care, between health care and social care. They are the areas, and, and this uh, particular uh, patient group we're talking about today are particularly prone to being bounced backwards and forwards between the various bits of the, uh, of the system, four times visits to GPs, 
they move between health and social care. There's all sorts of connections. They get admitted to hospital in a, inappropriately. All of those things duplicate and reduce the amount of productivity that we've got, as well as giving a poorer service for our patients than we, than we need to. So as we come under financial pressure, it seems to me the importance of listening to patients is even greater. So if you look at long-term conditions in general, it seems to me this is the kind of key bit of the, of the NHS. We know um, uh, today, in fact, we've known this for quite a long time, actually, that about a quarter of our patients sat in hospital beds across the, uh, across the NHS today um, suffer from more than three concurrent long-term conditions. Uh, we, know, uh, we, we know that from the information that we, we have. We know that there are much better ways of either preventing admission in the first place by better management, better care, earlier, sorry, earlier intervention, earlier diagnosis to keep those people out. And we know there's lots of evidence about how we can get them out of hospital quicker and re re rehabilitated. But we simply haven't done it. For all sorts of reasons, I perfectly, perfectly understand. The benefit of doing it, though, of course, is absolutely enormous not only in terms of productivity, but also in terms of the experience and clinical outcomes of our, of our patients. We all know the risks of going in. Nobody should go into hospital lightly, is what I, I say. We all know the risks of, uh, of hospital, hospital care, and it is extraordinarily expensive, particularly for this group of, group of patients. So the importance of us focusing our attention on this particular group and getting the care and and support right, getting, making sure that we invest now in the education of those patients so that they can play a full part in terms of their own self-management and self-care is an enormous priority for us over the next 18 months or so as we take things forward. So at a national level, what can we do to help? Well, we can make the argument, and we are making that argument as we take it, take it through. There are a whole series of things that we can put into Place and we are doing, whether it be uh, patient-related outcomes, whether it be making payments on the basis of quality, whether it be the reform of the tariff to make sure we can support people with long-term conditions much more effectively and earlier. All of those things, it seems to me, are particularly important, whether it be the development of our IT system, the development of MySpace, the way in which people can access and use their own information and data to to manage their care, all of those things, it seems to me, to be absolutely critical. So what I hope I've done in the short period of time I've, I've been here is to explain to you the importance and significance of patient <coughs> experience and understanding it, particularly for this group of patients who, uh, who, uh, who suffer from a long-term a long, a long -term condition. Not because I, I want to be nice to patients, which of course I do, that's not... I mean, that, that's important, but because it gives, it gives better outcomes for the patients, it improves the quality of service for our patients, it empowers our patients, and it provides them with better care and better outcomes. It seems to me that is a very powerful argument and a message that we need to use, particularly in an environment where we have uh, the challenges, financial challenges of the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Thank you.